Hi guys, it's MJ, the Student Tech Tree, and in this video, I want to talk about one of the biggest mergers in the world's history. It's between two beer giants, AB and SA Breweries. And what this video is going to be doing is we're going to be looking at mergers and acquisitions and the reasons why this company has now swallowed up this company. So two of the big reasons that uh, these guys have given us is that they see this as a long-term growth opportunity and they also see this as opportunities along the supply chain. Before we can get into that, let's just consider the two types of mergers that exist. You have something known as a vertical merger. This is when a company purchases another company um, in its supply chain. So you either buy a pub or you buy um, a company that supplies ingredients for beer. That would be a vertical merger. A horizontal merger is what's happening in this case, where the one company is purchasing its competitor. Now we use the word merger, but I don't think we should because this is more like an acquisition. A merger is when two companies come together and they have like an equal stake in each other and they're very, they're very happy. This happened with say SA Breweries and Millers and you can see, um, well the clue is in their name, it's now SAB Miller. Now that AB is buying SAB Miller, we see that the name SAB Miller is going to fall away and that AB is actually going to be the big player in this. So it's more of an acquisition. Now, why do they want to acquire um, SAB? Remember, we spoke about long-term growth opportunities and opportunities on the supply line. But the main reason is Africa. So Africa is the new continent where all the future business growth is going to be coming from. But because of its political climate, it's very difficult to do business here. It's very difficult to establish businesses here. Therefore, for AB, it was a much better route to just acquire South African breweries and who've already got you know, the infrastructure and the offices and the sales channels set out. They probably looked at the two case scenarios of competing directly and they saw you know, there's quite a high cost of setting up in Africa. It will be better for us just to buy um, our competitor. Now, some fun facts about uh, AB is they make 46% of the global profits in beer, but they only supply 27% of the global volume. Now, that is quite strange that those two numbers are quite different. Either what it's meaning is that AB's beers are just more expensive because they're benefiting from band, uh, brand power, or because AB is so large it can benefit from economies of scales. This is one of the big benefits of a merger is that two companies come together, they can share certain um, business operations and activities and therefore they can reduce costs. And this is quite clear as we're seeing that they have much higher stake of global profits than they do of the global volume. Um, also what this will allow AB to do is put on a lot of pressure on the other businesses in the supply chain. So before they would go to someone and say, hey, um, hey, Mr. Pub, or hey, guy supplying us with ingredients, we want it at this price. That other company might say, you know, that's too low, we actually want to do business with your competitor. But because AB is so big, they have got a much stronger negotiation um, stance in these things. So they can you know, negotiate a better better price, and that's what we're seeing why they have quite a nice higher profit uh, percentage. But anyway, let's talk about SAB Miller. Um, this is a really awesome company. It's a South African company formed back in 1895. Traditionally, it was made by a guy called Charles Glass, who was serving beer to miners. And then he joined up with a guy called Frederick Mead and they just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they listed on the London Stock Exchange and the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, one of the very first companies to, to do so. So they play quite a big role in South Africa's financial history. I'm going to get uh, later on in this video, I'm going to talk more about cross uh, listing. But before I do that, I just want to go through the journey of mergers and acquisitions that SAB Miller did before it's been acquired. So what the, one of the first things that they did was in 1995, they were thirsty for the European market. 
So they purchased, uh, I think you say Dreya, which is a Hungarian company. And what this did was this put them into Europe. So they bought this Hungary company and they were in Europe and they just kept expanding. They would later go and buy Peroni from Italy. They would buy Grolsch, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, from the Netherlands. They would then purchase uh, Pilsner from the Czech Republic. Czech Republic is one of the countries that consumes the most amount of beer per capita. So that was a big acquisition. And then, I don't know how to pronounce this company, Tis Tiski, is that, I don't know how you say them, uh, from Poland. So these were big acquisitions that they made. They would then go to America and they would make a merger. And we know this was a merger, not an acquisition, in the sense that the name Miller from this American company now joined up with SAB. So it was no longer SAB, it was SAB Miller. But this SAB Miller company was more of a merger with another company known as Molson Coors, which itself was a merger. Molson was from Canada and Coors was from the USA. SAB would also uh, go into another sort of partnership with a Chinese beer known as Snow. Now, I'd never heard of Snow before, but this is apparently the most popular beer in the world. Um, it gets drunk the most, but that might just be because China has such a massive population. But after this, the deals didn't go through so smoothly. Starting in uh, 2011, SA Breweries made a move on Foster's, the Australian uh, beer. However, it was a bit of a hostile takeover. There was a little bit of, you know, didn't go down too smoothly. And I don't think they acquired the brand in all territories. So there was some sort of mix up happening over there. But SA Breweries at this time was getting was feeling scared. They knew that they were going to be taken over by one of the bigger breweries. So what they did in 2014 was they tried to take over Heineken, which is a Dutch company. And the purpose for this was to defend itself from a takeover from AB. Remember, one of the reasons why companies merge is not just to get economies of scale, but also to defend themselves from a takeover. However, this merger did not go through. But SA Breweries did not just give up then. They did try and do a deal with Coca-Cola, where SA Breweries does a lot of the bottling and distribution of Coke products in Africa. And that was a very lucrative business. But it wasn't enough to defend them against AB. So AB have now purchased them. Now AB itself is also a whole bunch of breweries that have joined together in the past. Um, it has... In Interbrew, which is a Belgium uh, brewery that also had, you know, Canadian and German companies like Bex. Um, then there's also Ambev, which is from Brazil, part of this group, as well as where the AB comes from. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's an American company. Um, and their big popular one is Budweiser. Now, this company is much bigger than SA Breweries in the sense that they're making profits of $8 billion. Okay, now that's more than double that of SA Breweries. SA Breweries only has profit of $3.5 billion, which is interesting because they're spending $100 billion on a company that only makes $3.5 billion in profit. Now, why would you do that? Because this seems like quite a low rate of return. However, there are ways to increase this. Uh, AB are going to be doing a whole bunch of price cuts. There's rumors that they're going to be cutting a lot of jobs. They're going to be streamlining the process. They're going to be benefiting from economies of scale so they can cut expenses, which should increase profits. Or they're doing it, like we said, for Africa. It's that high growth opportunity. Or the most sinister reason is maybe SA Breweries was underreporting its profit in order to avoid tax. But that's a a speculative position and maybe now with this deal they'll be able to restructure it in such a way um, so maybe this what I'm basically saying is this profit should go up because 3.5 billion on a hundred billion purchase seems quite low it seems like quite a low rate of return especially for such a high risk and complicated merger but now that we've gone through the journey I want to look at something known as cross listing because this is something that both of these companies have done 
SAB is listed on both the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and the London Stock Exchange. Now, why have they done that? Back in the day, um, South Africa was a much smaller, well, still is a smaller country than uh, Britain. So there's this thing known as bonding. Bonding is when you cross-list on a market with a better investor protection than the jurisdiction of incorporation to protect investors by committing themselves voluntarily to a higher standard of corporate governance. Basically what that's saying is this attracts investors who would otherwise be reluctant to invest. So big investors might say, oh, you know, Africa, it's quite risky. I don't want to, you know, get, get my hands dirty with that. But if the company shares are listed on the British, British Stock Exchange, they're like, oh, yeah, we know the British Stock Exchange. Yo, okay, this is a much better way to, to invest. So it can lower the cost of capital because there's more investors, there's more liquidity as there's less restrictions. There is a bit of a disadvantage in the sense that you now have to have, you know, both of these listing uh, requirements. There's additional listing fees. There's more admin, more reporting, and all those type of things. Now, AB was the same. They're listed both on the Brussels Stock Exchange as well as the American Stock Exchange. And the interesting thing is that they're going to, well, they have already now listed on the South African Stock Exchange. So Carlos Bruto, one of the big boys at AB, says that the reason they've done this is to demonstrate the company's commitment to Africa, which is central to the rationale of the deal. Remember, we spoke about that earlier. He also says that this is a vote of confidence in South Africa as an investment destination. And a little fun fact, it only took 21 days to list, which for such a big company is quite an achievement. Now, the reason why a big company might want to list on, say, a smaller markets um, exchange rate is maybe for a little bit different reasons. This might be able to facilitate foreign acquisitions, improve labor relations in foreign countries by introducing share and option plans for the foreign employees. So now people who work for AB or previously SAB can now get stock options in AB that they can easily sell on the South African Stock Exchange. So it makes them happier and we see that it facilitates foreign acquisitions, which is what these guys are doing. Now, this is great for the South African Stock Exchange. It's sending a positive message. You know, we've got one of the biggest companies in the world now listed on our stock exchange, um, which is great for people who want to have like a little bit of a rand hedge. They can now go and buy shares in this company, knowing that a lot of their profits are offshore. It might mess up our, our indices in the sense that, you know, with such a big company, remember I spoke about in earlier videos on benchmarks and indices, how this will weaken diversification because it's, it will dominate the index. But one of the cool things, though, is that pension funds have a restriction on the amount of foreign capital that they can deploy. But with AB being a foreign company listed on the JSC, by them purchasing this foreign company, it doesn't mess up with their restrictions. So it's a way to get around that rule. Anyway, that's a lot of technical talk. Um, let's maybe end off with a fun little political conspiracy. You know, this is uh, YouTube after all. So while I was looking at these companies, I couldn't help but notice that SAB Miller has got Trevor Manuel on their board of directors. Now, Trevor Manuel, for those who don't know, was South Africa's financial minister. Okay, so he was a politician. Now he's on a $100 billion corporation's board. I don't like it when a politician goes from being in politics to being in a corporate position like this. Because what he did is he had big influences on SAB Miller's operations while he was in this position. In the sense that he oversaw things like the syntax added to alcohol and various other economic policies around the, the sales of beer. So it's almost like these corporations are saying to politicians, be nice to us today because tomorrow, once you're retired, there is the opportunity for you to get a nice, comfortable position on our board. And that seems to be the case now. So we don't know, like I said, it's a conspiracy. We don't know if he did anything nice or special for SAB Millers while he was in office. But it is quite interesting that now that he's out of politics, he's now got this comfortable board position. 
Although financial ministers of South Africa is a very sensitive topic at the moment, especially with Praveen Gordon, who, for those of you who check out the news, it is quite a chaotic uh, scene at the moment. So there is this mix or this muddle of politics and finance, which, yeah, doesn't really sit too well. But anyway, let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this whole topic. What do you think about the $100 billion beer deal? What are your thoughts on cross-listing and mergers and acquisitions? Let me know in the comment section below. And seeing that it's Halloween coming up, I have made a little fun t-shirt uh, that's celebrating at Cherry Science along with the whole theme of Halloween. It's built on the, the life model and we've now included zombies. Um, but yeah, that's all for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Cheers.